if you know what I've heard, what I've seen, what I've felt, if you know what I've gone through, you'll be wondering why I stayed until this time. Now I've made up my mind. It's all over. And then when you say it's all over, and then God comes to you and says, let's start all over again. And we can start all over again. You say, Lord, there's no point. I prayed. I fasted. I visited Pastor so-and-so. And evangelist so-and-so prayed for me. And uh, apostle so-and-so prayed about this problem. Now that we have got to this stage, I want to live my life. And then God says, stay where you are. Something is going to happen. And things are going to change. That's the situation that Jeremiah got to. And then Jeremiah said, I will not preach again. I will not give any false hope to anybody again. Israel is gone. Forget about Israel. That's when God said, Jeremiah, I am the Lord, the God of all flesh. Is anything, is there anything under the sun difficult for me, hard for me that I cannot do? Is there anything in your life today that the Lord cannot deal with? He will deal with everything. In fact, you'll be surprised. Your testimony will surprise you yourself. Will surprise the rest of us. Because you are just beginning a new journey with the Almighty God. Let's come to this Jeremiah. Jeremiah chapter 23. This is a man that wanted to give up. Maybe I should read it to you. Because uh, those of us who are not familiar with this great prophet Jeremiah. You say, I never heard that. That Jeremiah wanted to give up. Jeremiah chapter 20. Before I come to the verse I want to read. Jeremiah chapter 20 verse 9. Then I said, I will not make mention of him, nor speak any more in his name. I said, I'm through. I preached my last sermon. I've given my last message. I've seen the faces of those people for the last time. I'll never get to them again. Then he said, but his word was in my heart as a burning fire shut up in my bones. And I was weary with forbearing and I could not stay. And that's the predicament in which Jeremiah found himself. And that's the reason why God came to him and said, Jeremiah, why are you giving up hope? I'm not through with Israel. And if not, they say, why are you giving up on yourself, on your husband, on your wife, on your children? Wherever those children are now, God is not through yet. Is he going to do something? And he's saying, and if you're doubting, how can he do it? With all that I've done for this child, look at where the child is now. That's why God says, is there anything too hard for the Lord, for me? Now, Jeremiah chapter 20, 23. Jeremiah 23, I'm reading from verse 3. It says in verse 3, And I will gather the remnant of my flock out of all the countries whither I have driven them. And I will bring them again to their falls, and they shall be fruitful and increase. And that's what surprised Jeremiah. That's why Jeremiah was wondering, Oh God, Israel of all nations... The people of Israel, of all kinds of people, why don't you choose another nation and do whatever you want to do? He says, no, I'm still stuck with Israel. They will be fruitful. You will be fruitful. And they will increase and you will increase. Then it says in verse 4, And I will set up shepherds over them, which shall feed them, and they shall fear no more. Nor be dismayed, neither shall they be lacking, says the Lord. It says they'll come to a situation where the plenty, the abundance they used to have, they're going to have that abundance again. In Jeremiah chapter 24, I'm reading from verse 6, For I will set mine eyes upon them for good, and I will bring them again to this land, and I will build them and not pull them down. I will plant them and not pluck them up. I will give them an heart to know me, that I am the Lord, and they shall be my people, and I will be their God, for they shall return unto me with their whole heart. That's why God said, Jim, I don't give up. Don't give up on them. There's a brighter future coming. And as a great demonstration of the love and the affection of God coming upon the people, and you are, if you have not enjoyed your ministry, you are going to enjoy the ministry. 
and great things are going to happen. So this is not the time to, to, to give up. You know, when the sun is about to rise and the day is about to dawn and the miracle you're expecting is just about to come and the things you have been expecting all these years, you've suffered enough and this is going to be the year of enjoyment and restoration. When everything you have desired, everything you have aimed at, everything you have dreamt of, everything is coming back to your life. If that is the time you give up, then isn't that a bad time? You didn't give up the other time. You almost died. You didn't give up the other time. The, the man, your husband, almost you know, beat your brain out. You didn't give up the other time after that terrible accident. You didn't give up the other time after that disappointment with your children. If you endured all that and just at the time now you are going to have a breakthrough, then you say i'm quitting you will not quit today the lord is saying is anything too hard for me this is not the time to quit we're moving on and we're going to have everything we have lost we're going to have everything back in jesus name and then in chapter 30 this is wonderful this is wonderful in chapter 30 of jeremiah it is why jeremiah was thinking that is any point still moving on and that's why the question came back to him is anything too hard for me jeremiah chapter 30 verse 12 but thus says the lord thy bruise is incurable thy wound is grievous well that's the, that's the reason to give up since my wound is incurable and since the bruise is a grievous what am i doing still staying with the lord in verse 13 there is none to plead thy cause that thou mayest be bound up thou hast no healing medicine that's why they wanted to give up that's why jemaah thought all right why waste your time where well, somebody is having a terminal case the fellow is going to die anyway why waste your time your resources your energy on a person that the almighty god has declared incurable but then you must go on don't just stop there now verse 17 for i will restore health unto thee you thought it, it, the case was hopeless. You thought the case was incurable. That's the reason you were thinking there's no point moving on. And Godness says, read on. Don't stop in verse 13. In verse 17, I will restore health unto thee. I will heal thee of thy wound, says the Lord. Because they called thee an outcast, saying, This is Zion whom no man seeketh after. Now you understand why Jeremiah was wondering, Oh Lord, any point still moving on? Any point still holding on? Any point still being focused on the promises of God? And God says, Yes, because I am the God of all flesh. And is there anything too hard for me? Now, let's look at chapter 32 now, verse 17. Chapter 32, verse 17. Ah, Lord God. Jeremiah is waking up now. You will wake up. I said, oh, wake up. You know, you get to the point in your life where it's like, uh, you know, in my, in our mathematics, one will draw the graph. Sometimes you go down into the valley. And then if you keep on tracing the graph, then you come up. And when you are in the valley, everything is dark. There's discouragement. There's depression. There's distress. And it appears that, uh, uh, why it not because you know that if somebody kills himself, he'll go to hell. He'll say, maybe it's even better to die than to live. But you remember that if somebody kills himself it's going to go to a so it's okay i'll stay there until, but god can you please help me out i don't mind if you kill me at this time now because i'm not looking for any other thing and all of a sudden the sun begins to come up all of a sudden there is hope in your heart all of a sudden remember the promises of god you have forgotten all of a sudden you are praying oh god i don't want to die again I want to see a new day. And I want to see the power of God working in my life. All of a sudden, you are giving testimonies to other people. All of a sudden, you pick up your Bible where the Bible was almost covered with dust. And you dust off everything. All of a sudden, all of a sudden, Sunday morning, 11th of May, 2008, I see you in church. And you are here today. Something is going to happen to you. I said something is going to happen to you. 
because now Jeremiah is rising up and Jeremiah is saying no I'm not I'm no more in that place in the valley of despondency anymore in verse 17 chapter 32 our Lord God behold thou hast made the heaven and the earth by thy great power and stretch out arm there is nothing too hard for thee can we say that together there is nothing too hard for thee we'll experience that today in jesus name point number two now our comprehension our comprehension of god's promises our comprehension of god's promises and you know why jeremiah said what he said because he now began to understand in a new way the promises of god he now began to see what he didn't see before the light was now shining and dawning in his heart and because of this light that just came on now that's why he too now chorused the answer and he said god i know, i understand now i know you are the god of all flesh and there is nothing that is too hard for thee what dawned on him what did he see and what did he feel what you see now he just woke up now the comprehension of the promises of god i'm going to jeremiah chapter 31 jeremiah chapter 31 verse 11 for the lord has redeemed jacob and has ransomed him from the hand of him that is stronger than he thank you jesus thank you lord and that's that's what brought problem into the heart of jeremiah he saw the babylonians coming and he saw they were mightier than israel he saw the thousands hundreds of thousands of those people they had iron boots and they had golden helmet and then their gods they, they, they will never miss it and he saw them in vision coming and he said we're through we're finished and now he, God said, I'm going to deliver Jacob from the enemy that is stronger and mightier than him. Oh, and there's nothing too difficult for God. Maybe you've seen that the enemy is stronger than you are. That your circumstances are greater than you can plow through. And because of that, you are going down and down. All of a sudden, you remember and you realize that God will deliver you from all the people that are stronger than you are. I don't care how much money they have, how many people they know. I don't care what connections they have. And they think they're going to use all their money, all their authority, all their power, all their connections to destroy you. They have failed already. Yeah. And that's the reason why Jeremiah now came. He came up. He said, if you're going to deliver me from the one that is stronger than I, then I am all right. And this morning, I am all right. I said, I am all right. Look at this in verse 20 now. Is Ephraim my dear son? Is he a pleasant child? For since I speak against him, I do earnestly remember him still. And you know the problem of Jeremiah? God told Jeremiah, go and tell those children of his, I hate what you do. Now, you must listen to God when he talks. When God says, I hate what you do, that's different from I hate you. That's different. How many times you pick your children, one of the children, you pick them at school. And then you see that, uh, you know, there's not, the one pair of shoes is gone. And then the bag is torn and all that. And then you see that the appearance is very rough. You say, my, my boy, what's the matter? Where are your shoes? I don't know. Your bag, why is it torn? What did you do? I don't know. Where are your books? Then you search the bag. Where are they? I don't know. I love you, but I hate what you do. You are my child. I love you. Have you ever said that? Using the words love and hate in the same sentence. I love you dearly. You're my only son. I love you, but I hate the people you are running with. I hate the people you are moving, but I love you. But you see, because God told Jeremiah, tell the children of Israel, I hate what you do. They thought he meant, I hate you. I don't have any interest in you. And because I hate you and I hate what you do, then Jeremiah said, why am I going to stay ministering to people that God hates? Why am I going to stay hanging out with people that God... Then God said, no, Jeremiah, you didn't get my message. 
is Ephraim, verse 20. Is Ephraim, my dear son, is he a pleasant child? For since I speak against him, I do honestly remember him still. Therefore, my bowels are troubled for him. I will surely have mercy upon him, says the Lord. The Lord will have mercy upon you. Oh yes, he may not appreciate that thing you said, that thing you did. And that's not you. That's what you did. It's your action. He hates the wrong action, but he loves the actor. He loves everyone. He loves us here today. I said he loves you here today. And it was that that not made Jeremiah to come back to say, Yes, now Lord, I understand what you're trying to get across. You still love us. You still love me. You still love the people of God. The covenant people of God. And the light began to dawn and to shine around him. Look at verse 31. In verse 31, it says, Behold, the days come says the Lord, that I will make a new covenant with the house of Israel and with the house of Judah. He said, they broke in the old covenant. And because they broke in the old covenant, it's like, you know, they are here and I am there. We are, you know, far apart. But now a new covenant is coming. In verse 33, but there shall be the covenant that I will make with the house of Israel. After those days, says the Lord, I will put my law in the their inward parts. Maybe you don't understand. This is what encouraged Jeremiah. And Jeremiah was kind of thinking, who am I, by the way, trying to help these children of Israel? Because I think about Moses, and Moses was a great man of God, and there is no way I can step into Moses' shoes. That's right. That's good humility. And then God sent the law, and he wrote it upon the tables of stone. But those children of Israel, before Moses came back from the mountain top, they had broken the law. Therefore, Moses too he smashed the thing and broke everything. And those children of Israel, they were not able to keep that law till the death of Moses. And so, Jeremiah said, Moses who is greater than me, was not able to do it. Who am I? How can I do it? And God said, but I will do it. Lord, what are you going to do? You are going to write the law again. They are, they are broken over and over. Yes, I'm going to write it. Then can I present the stones to you to write on? He said, no. I'm going to write it now in their heart. It's going to be a greater ministry. And it's going to be a deeper, richer, broader ministry. And then they will take, you know the law, the law of Moses, you know where they put it? In the Ark of the Covenant. It's written on the stone and it's put in the Ark. And there in the temple, in the Holy of Holies. But now I write it in their hearts and they take it back home. You take your heart back home and it is reaching on your heart and you take everything back home. Then when you are coming back again, you bring it here. And then when you are going back again, you take it back home. Isn't that 